The story of Joseph is one of my absolute favorites in the whole Bible. It goes like this. Joseph, age 17, was the second youngest of 12 boys to his father Jacob, and he lived in the land of Canaan. Joseph was his dad's favorite child, and he made Joseph a beautiful robe of many colors. This caused tension among the brothers, and they hated Joseph. Let's pause a second for some cultural context. In biblical times, the firstborn son was given unique rights and privileges. He was the priority in the family and given the family inheritance. He would also care for his mother if the father died and would provide for his unmarried sisters. But birthright can be lost. Joseph's oldest three brothers were denied the birthright for doing some really messed up and violent things. So all that to say, the fact that the youngest was the favored one was very anti-cultural, likely stirring up more anger amongst the brothers. Okay, now back to the story. Joseph had these really interesting dreams. Joseph said, listen to this dream. We were out in the middle of the field gathering sheaves and suddenly my sheaves stood up and your sheaves all gathered around and bowed down before mine. His brothers responded, so you actually think you will be king and reign over us? This dream made them hate him even more. Soon after, he tells them another dream. The sun, moon, and 11 stars bowed down low before me. This time, his dad also heard the dream and scolded him saying, what kind of dream is that? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down before you? But dad actually was wondering what these dreams meant while his brothers grew in their jealousy. One day, Joseph's brothers are pasturing a flock near Shechem and Joseph goes to check on them. His brother Others see him coming in the distance and they make plans to kill him and throw him into a cistern. Reuben the oldest says, let's not take his life. Let's just throw him in the cistern in the wilderness, but not lay a hand on him. Reuben's secret plan was to rescue him and take him back to their dad. So when Joseph gets to them, they strip him of his robe and throw him in the empty dry cistern. Next, the brothers see a caravan of Ishmaelites coming. They were headed for Egypt. So they sell him into slavery for 20 shekels and Joe is off to Egypt with them. Reuben returns and is devastated when he sees that Joe Joseph is no longer in the cistern and doesn't know what to do. So the brothers slaughter a goat and dip the beautiful robe in the blood. They take it back to their father and Jacob recognizes it as Joseph's robe. And then he believes that a ferocious animal devoured him. Meanwhile, the Israelites make it to Egypt and sell Joe to Potiphar, captain of the guard of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. The Lord was with Joseph as he succeeded in everything he did to serve the home of the Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed Joe's success and put him in charge of everything he owned. But Potiphar's wife began to lust after Joseph and tried to tempt him to sleep with her. After Joseph's refusal, she lies and says he rapes her. When Potiphar hears of this, he throws Joe into prison. But all the time the Lord was with Joseph and showed him his faithful love. God then made Joe the favorite of the prison keeper. Joe ends up accurately interpreting the dreams of two inmates. So when Pharaoh has a disturbing dream, he hears of Joseph's gift and asks for his dream to be explained as well. Because of his accurate telling of the dream, which included seven years of abundance for Egypt, followed by seven years of horrible famine, Joseph becomes second in command over all of Egypt. During the famine, Joseph's brothers come to Egypt for food, but they don't recognize Joe at first. It's 20 years later. At first, Joe goes along with it, and after a series of really dramatic events, the brothers are bowing before Joseph, fulfilling the first dream Joseph ever told at age 17. He reveals himself to the brothers, and Joe sends for the whole family to come to Egypt. After their father Jacob dies, the brothers are worried Joseph will now get his revenge, but instead he weeps when he hears their appeal and says, Do not fear, for am I I in the place of God. You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So you see, God literally allowed all of this to happen to provide for Joseph's whole family years later during the famine. He works through every part of this story to ensure his purposes prevail. Joseph is such a beautiful story of forgiveness, mercy, grace, and redemption, and it magnifies what the Lord was doing back then, and he is still doing now, drawing people to himself and redeeming all things for his glory.